Hey everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReviewRelease.com. CardsReviewRelease.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOKABROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Chocobros. No Sam this week, but I am Zach Burrell. And I am Cody Snodgrass. And we're going to go over the Crystal Cup, because we have not talked about it yet. And last week yes. we had uh, Jesse on the cast. Uh, it was an awesome cast. I know Jesse watched all of these. Dude, it was awesome to have you. Uh, had some... <laughs> fun questions to answer and uh it's fun to you know have him interview us and us interview him and kind of get him engrossed in it i'm sure he'll be a return uh member of the cast for sure oh yeah he he has to be i was i was <laughs> jealous i couldn't make it unfortunately yeah, right. i had to catch a plane that day so it was funny and yeah before the cast started he's like oh where's cody why isn't cody joining blah blah, blah. and then like he joined and was just like eh. <laughs> and then later he's like oh shout out to cody <laughs> it's, yeah it's like back and forth yeah i went back and watched it, it as a it was a cool cast yeah, so, uh, yeah, we haven't had a chance to talk about the Crystal Cup, but we didn't want to wait too long. Uh, Sam's been slammed by work, so he couldn't join us tonight. But, uh, yeah, let's talk about it. So, how was your, like, beginning of the whole trip? Like, flying down, how was all that? Uh, the flight down and everything was all good. Um, didn't have any, like, issues. Uh, getting to Tampa is much warmer than what I'm used to out <laughs> here in, in the Midwest. Uh, but Now, you have no, was not... your mom in the area, or fa- who, what yeah. family? Okay. My mom stays in Gibsonton, Florida, so she's pretty close. So. Okay, so that's not bad. Is that where you stayed for like the whole event? No, I stayed actually at the at the hotel right next door. Oh, okay. Um, the, the but we got app? to hang out. We got to hang out before and after the event. Um, what was it? It was the Holiday Inn Express. Okay, I just I, think it was. I never look at it. <laughs> I know oh. <laughs> this giant hotel right there. I just never pay attention to what company it is. Yeah, but but yeah, I got to stay within walking distance of the venue so that was very nice right were you with uh the meta potion guys so like uh, yeah okimoto matt and all those guys yeah yeah it was me rice oki and andy carmona were rooming together so oh, okay oh greg cole wasn't in the room too and like Azul no no guys? they were in a room right down the hall from us so oh okay uh, yeah i guess there's limits to that it's not like an airbnb where you just stuff everybody on every couch <laughs> yeah. and floor tile <laughs> yeah fortunately this was just four people though room <laughs> <laughs> right um, so but... What do you think of the store? So Sunshine's our once a week local. We go there on Saturdays. It used to be Sundays. Um, they host us. They're probably the most supportive store in the area. They're actually definitely the most supportive store in the area. Uh, so what, what was your kind of opinion of the layout, the shop? Because that was their first major event in that new location too. Yeah, at first I was kind of worried about the size of the venue. Mm-hmm. Um, but it ended up working out pretty like per- perfectly in my opinion. Uh, the staff is real good. Um I think it's cool that you guys have a store that will actually buy singles because mm-hmm. I haven't been able – none of our stores even, like, will buy bulk or anything. Oh, so. really? Yeah, nothing under the case, nothing. Huh, that's weird. So having a store that I could actually, like, sell some stuff back was nice. Um, yeah. how, now, how are the rates? I've actually never sold cards to them before. I don't know how, like, Final I, Fantasy market works. <laughs> or I you really just hand them cards and be like, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, they could have named any price and I would have been like, yeah, that's cool. It was all just extra stuff. <laughs> right, um, right from the tournament that me and you had participated in, which I'm sure we'll get to that later. Um, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that will be. I almost forgot about that. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, yeah so and, uh, the tournament, I think, went pretty smoothly in terms of setup and administration and all that. The announcements weren't, like, crazy or anything. There were no absurd repairs, I don't think, right? Like, I think it was pretty smooth over the yeah. whole thing. I think this was the first tournament I've been to, at least in a while, that didn't have a repair. Had the lights flick every once in a while, but no repairs. <laughs> yeah, but that was that was okay. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, so uh, round one, uh, you were the feature match, so you were yeah. the first match watch of the event. Uh, how did that feel, like kind of going up? I know you're no stranger to being, you know, on camera. So are you? Does it even affect you anymore? Or? Uh no. Well, until I saw my opening hand, I was good. Like everything oh. was fine. <laughs> and then I opened my hand. I'm like, okay, I'll mulligan this. No backups, and I draw and. There's no backups. I'm like, all right, well. And what, triple Sid Alstein, right? I think it was either triple or double, and then I drew into the third one. It was <laughs> real bad. Right. So talk about um, that match a little bit, because I know, I know your opponent was very nervous. It was very clear on the stream, was like a little bit of shaking here and there, definitely some kind of like, you know, jittery yeah. movement. Yeah, she was definitely nervous, but at the same time, as the match went on, I was getting pretty nervous. Uh, mm-hmm. I kept looking over at like the time and everything like that. Um, but yeah, starting off with no backups, that hurt. I was able to eventually overpay for an Edward later on, and then <laughs> kind of slowly crawl back. Um, at least but if there's a backup in that deck to overpay for, like Edward and Gastelion Sid are probably the two you're like okay with. <laughs> 
Yeah, that, unfortunately, that great, but... yeah, unfortunately, it makes Harley essentially useless. But true, true. I had to get something going. Yeah, you gotta um, do what you gotta do. But yeah, but yeah, I was able to capitalize um, mostly because my opponent Sarah, she had she wasn't attacking some turns, mm-hmm. and like as I go back and rewatch the match, like she could have very clearly beaten me. Probably, definitely should have beaten me. But um, yeah, I mean, stuff happens. I, like uh, I think. It was, Chris Adams and Adam Lane were the two on uh, stream, I believe, at the time. They like they were saying, like it happens. Like people aren't used to being on camera. Like we do a podcast almost every week, so like we're used to being in front of a camera and like putting ourselves out there to people. Whereas not everybody is. So, right, and we played in like multiple like on stream games and stuff like that. So, and I right. believe this was her first like big quote unquote tournament. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. So yeah, just, I think it's just some early jitters. Um. But yeah, fortunately, I was able to win that game. Um. But what about you? How was your round one? So my round one was pretty disappointing. <laughs> I uh, I got into a matchup that I felt super comfortable in, and okay. I bricked on backups for the first three turns. I had like one backup, but it was, and then I drew into like two of the same main backup, and it was, I, it was just a really rocky start. And uh, the deck I was playing, uh, which I should probably talk about real quick, was uh, Earth Water Monsters, but it was not the deck Sam was playing. Uh, mm-hmm. Mine was a little more forward focused. I had to lay the Viking package, which we'll, we'll talk about, all about that. I <laughs> uh, had triple Kefka, triple Veritas, uh, triple Gao. It was just big, like beat sticks plus a lot of like removal. Um, like I had two magic pots, so I got to magic pot Kefka and Veritas people all day, which was fun. Um, mm. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, I had two magic pots on the field in the first like three or four turns. I just drew them and just played them for one in like on curve. Oh man, <laughs> Veritas, one of them, and uh, Kafka, the other, felt great. Um, Seems pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so it was fun, and I had a uh, whale zombie. It was kind of the spice of the deck. Uh, I know Sam played that on stream as well. That card's pretty good, especially because um, you get to you got a whole bunch of whales. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we're... I don't have my head on. Uh, <laughs> it's actually behind me right there. But um, yeah, the fact that you can play it to draw a card and then, like, in response to the ability, sacrifice it to look at top two can kind of fix awkward early draws. Like, there was one game... Um, actually, it was that first... Um, I think it was that first match, actually. I had to play Will Zombie, like, turn one with no backup and go. Oh. <laughs> uh, and that was obviously very awkward. Uh, the only reason I didn't crack it is because I didn't know if it was a Zane, uh, Zidane matchup, so I wanted to be able to fix my next two draws based on the matchup. Um, turns mm-hmm. out I should have, you know, done the the correct play of respond look at top two draw but whatever um and what where were you up against what was the deck you were uh, going against? i was against mono earth so typically mono earth is just slam big guy slam big guy slam big guy and then i get to go veritas 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 and eventually i'll start two for wanting in the future and if um, unless they try to build up early but then i can kind of lay the viking aggro out because they don't have really too many wipes besides like if i walk into a prompto or like a shantoto or something like Modern Earth doesn't have a whole lot of um, like AOE clear, so I can typically mm-hmm. one for one very easily against that deck. So I was feeling very good when I saw what the deck was, but I just could not draw. <laughs> it saved my life, and eventually they assembled the uh, Final Fantasy 15 package on field and just braved me out uh, before I could really come back from it. So it was pretty rough and disappointing. I always hate starting off 0-1 <laughs> uh, in a tournament. Like I always say, if I can start off 1-0 today, it's going to be good. But that's fair enough. Now, what about yeah. round two for you? Uh, round two, I actually had to go up against Colin Rupert um, on Mono Water. World's contender. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're gonna talk all about him later. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I, I actually, it was actually a fairly easy matchup for me. I was on Ice Earth Flan, mm-hmm. uh, which I guess I probably should address at some point. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was able to, like, I want to say I opened two backups that game. So from coming from my round one opponent like matchup where i had no backups i was just slamming backups immediately as soon as i saw them um we had kind of an awkward each had an awkward like round turn two where like i played two two drop backups and passed and then they got back to me and i had nothing i could play so i just passed back (laughs) luckily he did the same exact thing and neither of us had like a turn two play um which is good for me i guess Right. Going against Mono Water, I expected like at least a third backup to come down. Or like a Layla Viking or something off two backups. Yeah, <laughs> or something. Uh, and I survived his first Layla Viking, and then I hit his other two Laylas into damage, which was Ooh. very early. So, uh, yeah, and then so I just pretty much... Match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, I think I dropped Sephiroth on him, 
and made him discard two. And I want to say he discarded two Veritas off that, so that felt good. Um, but yeah, I pretty much could, was able to control his hand, and everything that I was hitting into his like damage zone was there was no EXs really. Mm-hmm. It was all like cards that he wanted to see, so right. that went in my favor. Um, but yeah, so I ended up winning that match. Um, how so about a your decent matchup two? plus the oh. stars aligned kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. The the damage like I hit Kignazo, <laughs> two Layla in a row. It Reminds very... me of like Sam's match. I think it was against Ian in the uh, uh, reunion event where it was like Illua, Illua, Estinian or whatever in damage. <laughs> he was <laughs> yeah. just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it felt uh, good. Seeing the second and third Layla, I was like, oh, I think I got this game. So Right. So my round two, uh, I played against a local and teammate, uh, Will Herrera, um, on Mono Water. That game went to deck out uh, in my favor. So I actually dealt the seventh <laughs> point of damage when he had no cards in deck. Uh, cause oh. he, he was, he just like conceded. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, let me deal the seventh point of damage his teammates. So he's a like, yeah, sure, or whatever. I'm like, Oh wait, you have no deck. Never mind, It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> the game was over at that point. I could just pass and it was over. Um, that match was grindy and fun. Like for probably the first 30 cards of our deck, it was just like, you play some guys, I play some guys, I kill all your guys, I kill all your guys. And it was just board resets, board resets, all game, so much control. Uh, because I mean, I, like I said, I have the three Veritas, three Kefka. I think I played two of my three Kefka for like for eight from hand that game just to like kill his guys. Uh-huh. I just had so many extra cards in hand because we were just not doing anything <laughs> for a long time. Uh, and then I think I magic potted the, the second one to kill another guy. Uh, that was the game I had double magic pot, I think, but interesting. So yeah, no, it was actually a Super really, good. really fun interactive matchup. Uh, uh very grindy. But yeah, I went to six six uh, damage, and I dealt the seventh point on no deck. Uh, yeah, so deck out number one. <laughs> <laughs> that one went in your favor, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, that one went in my favor. We'll we'll talk about. Yeah, we're we're getting there. <laughs> we'll get to more of that. So what about your uh, round three? Uh, so round three, I went up against Greg Cole uh, on okay. Scions, which I, I I had a good feeling that he was on Scions, just because I feel like he's probably. If not the best, one of the best Scion players. It's and just like, kind of his thing at this point. Yeah. 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 Um, and it started off. Uh, he he had the five like five back row, all Scions except for Louis Swa. Very as early. As <laughs> yeah. So I was I was super worried, and I know he plays like a lower backup count than most. I think he only plays fifteen backups. Mm-hmm. So for him to see all five that quick, it was. I was a little worried. Um, Fortunately, I was able to. You are correct. It is just yeah. all three ofs. He actually only has five backups, and they're all three ofs. Okay. Oh well, yeah. He had all five down, I think, by turn two or three. So it was very quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, fortunately, there was a turn where I was going to uh, Sephiroth special, his only card in hand, mm-hmm. um, just because I knew I had a feeling it would be like a Scion forward, like Dan Cred or maybe like Yada. And I actually swung. I hit his Papalimo in the EX. So he searched a second card. Oh, so good. So, so, so then I Sephiroth specialed, obviously. <laughs> and he actually he actually said, he's like, Cody, if you, if you Sephiroth special me here, we, we can't be friends anymore. And I was like, <laughs> I, I got to do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that felt you good. can't be uh, friends anymore. <laughs> yeah, so I was able to get rid of, I think that was his third Yada, and then I believe it was Stankred in his hand, so... Yeah, it's always. I feel like that's a turning point in that matchup. Like once you see the third Ida like go away and they don't have minor or something, like yeah. it feels very winnable at that point because she puts yeah, so much and, pressure. Yeah, and he had no minor down. Obviously, I didn't even know he. I figured he played it, but obviously he did not. Yep. Um, but yeah, so I was able to win that. It was a close one, seven to six, and it was it was a quick game. Like it was very fast. Which I, I mean, think that's I remember how was... that round seeing you up pretty quick, and I was like, that either went yeah. very well or very poorly. Yeah. <laughs> But no, he had me up against. He had me at six damage very early, so it was. I was up against the ropes for a good portion of that match, um, but I was able to edge out the victory. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, what about your round three? So round three was against another local, uh, Alfred. Uh, people hear about him mm-hmm. all the time on the cast, uh, Mister Windwater. Uh, <laughs> I lost that game to deck out. Um, not Ooh. naturally though. Well, partially naturally because just Layla Viking ended up being a poor decision over the weekend because I just. The, the night before, I was messing around, just tweaking a couple numbers, making sure I had it where I wanted. I only had two of each, so two Layla, two Viking. I'm like, that should be enough. Put some more, you know, kind of like walls or something to push uh, for damage. 
and then I decked out like every game because I just drew so many cards between like Whale Zombie and Blade of Viking. Um, and then as soon as he noticed how low I was on deck, because uh, this was another matchup where it was just kill your guy, kill your guy, kill your guy, kill your guy. And like, I think there was one turn where I had three guys. He did like a Valfor, Fina, Diablo's turn where he just killed all my things. And then he had like three forwards. And then I did the exact same thing to him. <laughs> and we just couldn't keep things on the field. And then uh, we, yeah, and then he started milling me with Riku uh, every turn. And then he, I think he even ended up going, uh, like, mill you with Riku, pitch a wind card, Valfor, untap, mug you, and then, like, dude, that, like, he just turbo milled me out at one point. And I think he won with, it was, like, four to three in damage or something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, usually once you see, once you see your opponent drawing a lot of cards. Yeah, he got me hard. You just go, you just go <laughs> with the mill game, yeah. For sure. Um, Interesting. Okay, let's switch it up. I'll talk about round four, uh, mostly <laughs> because I don't remember the matchup. <laughs> oh <laughs> uh so i i lost that game uh, i believe the damage was three to three i decked out again uh, this time I was decking out to myself like i just couldn't close the game out and had things out. but i cannot remember for the life of me what the actual matchup was um but so at this point i'm one in three which feels pretty bad but i know that some x3s are making it uh i know my first round opponent is doing fairly well uh i know will kind of in the same boat as me at this point um i think he was two and two and then ended up x3 later and then alfred was poised to do well and then by the end of the tournament also did poorly um so tiebreakers were okay and then they petered off as the day went along but <laughs> so i was i was sweating it uh but i knew i just had to you know win out and just see what the tiebreakers say uh but yeah I, I i'm sorry whoever i played i cannot remember what the matchup was at all <laughs> they, they I, decked, got the I decked myself out again so I, I had like maybe three or four things on the field they had nothing and i was just so oh, even you okay. you said you were playing two layla two viking i was playing three. Oh, you bumped it okay so, yeah, they bumped so it. i bumped it because i thought uh it, it seemed more correct and i was talking to uh oh yeah i didn't even say this shout out to jonathan gordon and tony Jin for staying with me uh they flew in from uh canada and uh we stayed at my apartment for the weekend uh, and we were discussing the decks uh, the previous night. And he's like, oh, why not just max out? I'm like, eh, I think it's a lot of card draw. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, if anything, maybe I'll go to three Viking and two Layla. I'll do that whole trick. Because uh, I also had gladiators and stuff to bring them back if I really needed to get the Vikings on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, I had one Luna Freya, so I could do that to Layla if I really wanted to. Uh, which I don't think I had Luna Freya a single time through the whole tournament. I think I had it on the field once. <laughs> but uh doing that with kafka was gonna be pretty sweet yeah i was actually gonna ask about that but then yeah, Luna Freya, <laughs> yeah kinda... no, i never got to do it there were a bunch okay. of times where i was like verita i can't do it with verita so <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> what about uh, round four for you uh so round four i went up against uh mr foils himself max williams uh you coming out of that he sold all his foils that, that is true he and, and he was mantle. and he wasn't <laughs> playing foils uh so that was Oh. kind of heartbreaking uh but we were on almost the identical list i just adjusted some backups and he did the same um but we were pretty much an identical list um he ended up just edging it out it wasn't a very like close game i would say um mm -hmm. but it's kind of just weird it was kind of like whoever got duke lard i think he got duke lard down first and then by the time i think i drew into it that is how a lot of ice matches feel for sure yeah it was kind of like a little too late to where I had to establish board presence. Um, but yeah, he ended up edging out that victory. So uh, I would drop down to three and one. Um, but knowing he's my tiebreaker, I felt pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, just because he has, he's a pretty well-known player. He's very good at the yeah. game. So right, right. I, I felt pretty good with him being <laughs> my tiebreaker. Um, but so uh, moving on to round five, uh, who did you go up against? So round, round five, I do not remember uh, the dude's name, uh, but it was a Fire Earth deck. Uh, it was okay. Warriors of Light. Um, he was, it seemed like he was inexperienced against, obviously he probably doesn't play against, you know, Whale Zombie and Kefka all the time. But right. I had Yuna H out, and mm -hmm. he was playing, I don't know if I said Warrior of Lights, but uh, that means yeah. he was playing the Light Wall and there was a turn where I had uh, bounced his light wall with Yuna H. 
and then the next turn through some sequence of or no i'm sorry he saw me get unit h with minor and then he pitched a hecaton chair to play his wall mm. so like the, the backup removal hecaton? yeah the backup one so i'm like in my head i'm like he must have another one in hand right he just You'd didn't think. think about the fact that i'd brought back unit with it was i think it was with a minor mm-hmm. or i'm in philly one of the two and he didn't have the answer for unit h so i got to bounce his wall and then play maybe a second or a third backup or something and then he replayed wall and i got to veritas it and then i said remove and he read unit h game he's like oh right and so he didn't get his guy back and then from there it was just very downhill uh so he played like one of like two guys or something i got to kill both and then i think he traded with a second so then veritas got to sack one of his backups and like forced him to get rid of one of his backups, and he was stuck on three at the time. He got rid of his only red sword, so he just he he just was playing it a little strangely. Um, I would have kept one of the other earth backups, uh, but once he, once I cleared the board that second time, he never could stick anything again. I had all three Veritas in hand, like so I, <laughs> I got to play one. As soon as one died, I played another. And like I think he saw the third one and was like, okay, <laughs> this is this is over. So I, I won that one. Uh, uh, I played Lay the Viking on one of the early turns too and that was getting in a lot of damage because i just kept killing these guys uh so i won that one seven oh in damage okay interesting so it was um, awkward sequencing i think that's fair enough uh so round five and six is where things got a little uh awkward for me uh round okay. five i played against uh kyle peters uh so he's the guy that won the petite grand finals sure sure Whatever, whatever that tournament was called. So he was the first national qualified U.S. Mm-hmm. player. Uh, and me and Kyle have played before. Uh, we know each other pretty well uh, from the Kansas tournaments and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, he w- and we had actually spoke the round before. I had, I, had, I think I was walking back to the venue, and I saw him and Lopez talking, and uh, they were talking about like their hidden tech cards. Oh, the Royal and Sephiroth. Yeah, <laughs> and I probably, I probably could have pried it out of them what it was, uh, but I, I just decided not to. And then of course. I end up playing him the next, the following round, like a few minutes after that. <laughs> uh, so he's he was on Wind Earth, or so I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and basically every turn he was Moogle or yeah Moogle Eleven specialing. So he's like basically like loops yeah, with it. yeah he was like picking it up and just it was basically like every turn he drew two cards and then picked up Mog from his break zone, searched whatever he wanted, did it again. Um, so I already was like in a horrible position. And then when I thought I was going to be able to mount like some kind of comeback, I have four cards in hand. He breaks Star Sybil, drops Sephiroth. Or no, maybe he broke Sherlota for the ICP. Oh, yeah, it'd be Lotta, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's what it was. To get the ICP. Puts down Sephiroth. I'm like, oh, boy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> here we go. And then I think he ended up dropping Renoa that turn. Or he, he like, Sephiroth special. One of the two. Or something. Yeah, he either Sybil did in, or he did the Sephiroth special from hand. I mean, they probably have uh, Chaos too, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Chaos and then Toto as well for the ICP. Um, but yeah, so he ended up taking all of my cards from my hand, and then <laughs> I was pretty much top-decking the rest of the game. Which and he had just... Like, you want to be in against yeah. those two forwards, and uh, like the rest of Earthwind backing him up. Yeah, yeah so uh, it wasn't very close. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he ended up getting that one. Um, so yeah, that was my round five. I dropped to three two, but ha- I knew Max had won, so I knew Max was. I believe he was undefeated at the time. And then the next round, you played maybe Kyle Peters' oh. teammate on the same deck, right? Yeah, I played against uh, Lopez, so <laughs> national champion on the same exact list as Kyle, <laughs> or at least I believe it was very close because they usually play almost identical decks these mm-hmm. days. I think it looked pretty. Yeah, and they, they named it Mono Ice too, which is pretty fitting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So I, uh, I don't. I played that game pretty poorly towards the end. I was playing around Adele, like I needed to keep a blocker up, which I, I think. We, that, yeah. yeah, and we talked about it afterwards. Like I didn't have to actually. Adele's unblockable. Because so I didn't you know. have this. You have a vein sitting there in the corner, and you had it kind of near your deck. So I thought maybe you just forgot it was on the field, or like it was removed yeah. in like a weird place or something, and you didn't yeah. attack. I'm like, why is he attacking? I, and you said you were waiting for Adele, but I'm like, Adele's not blockable. You're like, well, that's why I kept the vein back. I'm like. She can't be blocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I was thinking at that point. Um, but I probably could have won a, like a turn or two earlier if I was just swinging with the vein. Um, mm-hmm. But I was playing around the Adele the wrong way, obviously. 
Uh, if Flopez would have had anything to activate his forwards, so like if he would have got Fina or Diabolos, I would have lost the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I had Edward active, but it was just like bait. I didn't actually have the Edward in hand. Right. Tenegate, I mean, as Tenegate. you do, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to um, but I was worried his last turn he drew into the Moogle special. He searched a card, but he never had enough, he didn't have enough CP to be able to mm. play it. So, gotcha. I, I was able to edge that one out. Did um, he? Did it? Did based on his reaction to that? Did, was it clear that he realized after, or did he know he wasn't gonna have enough CP and had to pass a turn? Like, did he search it? And was like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> or, uh, no, he he wasn't quite like that. Um, but when he drew. I've played Lopez like several times, so I know like the, but just by the look in his face whether or not he's got me in, or not. Uh, and it was not like a very like promising look that he had like victory or anything like that. So I felt pretty good. Yeah. For instance, if he drew like the Fina, it was just going to immediately slap the board, or if he drew the Diabolos or. Um, but yeah, fortunately, I was able to edge that one out. Um, nice. So around five and six, I was able to win one, lose one against the Kansas boys. So <laughs> it felt felt pretty good. Uh, but what about your uh, round five and six? Why don't you go over that? So five was the Fire Earth deck, and then round six oh, that's right, that's right. Uh, was Mono Wind featuring Yuna H off of Sherlotta. Okay. So the deck had Val Four, uh, Diablo, Sphina, like all that stuff, but it had no water cards except for Yuna H. Um, maybe it had it. It might have actually had like an EX like Choo Choo or something. But I think it, I, if I had to, you know, put money on, it, I'd say it was just the Yuna H's. Uh, that I remember anyway. So the smallest splash of water and yeah, wind water. Right. And so he had Chaos Walkers uh, to go with his Mono Wind deck, and he had Valfour. So he had like the two great parts about, or two of the great parts about wind water in his Mono Wind deck. So he got to do like Bards, Vada, all that kind of stuff, Fina, but he also had yeah, Yuri Chalinka, but he also had the Unit H. And so the Unit H put in work, uh, stopped my second half of the Veritas every time, uh, stopped couple other like monsters and things that he was able to just kind of remove he had he was playing white mage to remove from my break zone so i had to play around that the whole game so i couldn't just gal bring back an important monster because he could just remove it so mm-hmm. i had to like layla viking was not always necessarily a good play because he could just bring it back also i saw he had valve four which is rough because normally in the mono win matchup layla Viking's not awful because they don't have a lot of ways to ping it down unless they can go like chilink uh with alhanalem or something mm-hmm. so it was definitely it was it was annoying, but like I I completely respect it. Like I've done stuff like that too. Like put in random unit H or something into a like Irk wind we tried for a while. Um, so that matchup was also very grindy. Kill your guys, kill your guys, kill your guys, and <laughs> the fact that he had the Chaos Walkers and the Valfour combos made it way better uh, of a matchup. Because I think if it was just typical mono wind, I probably could have won that. But that was another game where we got to the end. He had three cards in deck. I had none in deck. And it was my turn, and I had like a couple cards in hand, a Kefka on the field, and I think a. Uh, what's the other forward I was playing? It was, a, it was a like weirder one. I had another forward on the field that could attack, but mm-hmm. it wasn't anything particularly amazing. And I just couldn't figure out how to. He played a second forward on his turn, and if he only had one, and then if he misplayed, I could have won. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he didn't. Uh, misplay he didn't do, go for the greedy play so i uh i was able to or i wasn't able to take that game and it was just another one of those ones where i just like hands or head in hands like i'm like one turn away from winning again i decked out again i was just so frustrated because the damage was five two or no it's four two three again so i had been dealt three and he was dealt four and he had three cards in deck, so if I could have gotten two damage in, I would have won the game because I could pass and he would actually mill out. All right. So, yeah. So another, it another, was just another a rough whole loss deck. day of deck out. And uh, I don't know if I could have played different to like, prevent it or if it was just the way I constructed my game plan of being too controlling and not enough like damage push. But... Sure enough. Turns out drawing too many cards can be rough. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, oh, that's uh, what it was. I had a ninja, the 3CP uh, standard unit in the deck. The one that takes oh, control of their guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what he had to do was um, play in such a way... Oh, he played Aerith. Um, where if he attacked with his one thing to kill my... Or to trade with my Kefka, I was going to be able to do... Um, I think I had a summon in hand that was going to basically trade it the other way. And then I'd be able to take control of his last guy, hit him down to enough cards, and then 
past her. Yes. But, right. But he did not attack. He just let me deck out, which is the right thing to do. He didn't get greedy. So, because he could have tried to put one damage and I just lose on the pass, because I would only have one card to draw. So. Okay. So what about uh, your final round seven? Um, I was in my car listening to music with the AC Ooh. on. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't play the last <laughs> round because I knew I was out and I was frustrated. Um, my phone was on two percent. Uh, so I'm like, listen, I got to charge my phone. It's really hot in the, uh, card shop because by, by that round, man, it was getting stuffy. Oh yeah. No, definitely. So I just like, I leaned back in the car, had the music <laughs> blasting and then I just had like AC going, phone charging. <laughs> like we're good. <laughs> just chill for enough, the yeah. whole round and then came back inside after and hung out. Yeah. At that point in time, it was like, you're either hot inside or you walk outside and it's like 80 something degrees. Right, there was no relief. <laughs> yeah. I already had a sunburn. I was... I was doomed. <laughs> yeah, <you did. laughs> uh, but no, so my round seven, I played against um, Jamie. Was it Graham? Is that his last name? Grantham, yeah. Grantham? Okay. He was also on Icer. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit of a different build, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, different build. Okay. Uh, I think he, he was playing Veritas in his build. Uh, still playing like the usual Flan and Flan. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but I think. Our main difference was he was on Veritas and I was on Needhog. I know for sure because uh, when he played Veritas on me, I Needhogged it the final, final, the following turn. Um, I was able to edge that one out fairly quickly. Uh, we both felt pretty good because we kind of both felt like we were both going to make day two. So it's a very casual game. There's no like real stress. Right, right. Um, just because I mean we were both X two, but we were up towards the top table, so right. Very calm game. Um, but yeah, so I was able to win that and go 5-2 and made the cut for top 32. So that was a pretty cool feeling. That was my main goal going down there. So. Right, yeah. I was like, man, if I could just day two and then, you know, grind it out. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> usually that's just my goal is just to day two wherever I go. So, but Keep your name up there on the leaderboards. So. <laughs> Get that picture. Try to do so. <laughs> that sweet, sweet picture on the U.S. page. <laughs> yeah, try to do something. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I ended up finishing 12th. Um, yeah, that was day one of the tournament. So, so how was your day two? Oh, it I was. I actually awful. don't know. <laughs> Did you lose the first round? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so you lost your top thirty-two. What did you lose? Yeah, to? I played against Azul, and he was on Mono Lightning. Yep. Um, we tested the match the night before after dinner. Me, <laughs> uh, Chris Adams, Andy Carmona. I don't know why. I probably could have just reached out to Azul because he was totally down just to play each other in the matchup, like to <laughs> test. Um, but either way, you I don't pick think up it a made... few things that you don't want to do. You yeah. don't want to necessarily play the matchup with the person because you pick up all the little nuances. Yeah. But... Or you try to like bluff and like pretend like you play differently or like I don't know. Um, but yeah, playing against the deck, it felt like a very easy matchup. <laughs> so I was super confident, and then I sit down and just got two O swept pretty pretty quickly. I say it's got to be pretty good to have Andy Carmona in your corner when you're testing against Manuel though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely felt good, but it was there was no Al Cid, so I didn't have to play around Al Cid. Oh, that's true. I actually um, just I'm looking at the list now. Yeah, because yeah, he made top eight. The, yeah, my board I could go as wide as I wanted because he wasn't playing Exodus, so I had no, I had like no fear of anything except I didn't draw any backups. So <laughs> that's always the fear. <laughs> um, so yeah, like my turn two play in game one was turn two Sephiroth, which isn't terrible, but it's like the last turn two play I want to make. And yeah. then my turn two. And then my turn two. Miss, you're like, oh, well, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then my turn two play, uh, game two, because he won game one pretty pretty cleanly. I had to go Sarah, which is not the worst. Turn one? Would... No, turn two. Oh, no, okay. not again. <laughs> <laughs> not again. <laughs> no, this, this time I had a backup, but uh, I didn't see much after that. Um, then the following turn, on turn three, I swung with Sarah, hit a seven, drop Odin. And pretty much from there, I knew the game was over. Like, there's not much. Those will crush dreams for sure. Yeah, yeah. When you're when you're on one backup, one forward with nothing in hand, and you hit a seven drop Odin with that only forward, it feels pretty bad. So, um, but he was able, and even like, I stabilized a little bit later on. I was able to like Shantoto his board. Um, but it's so weird hearing you say Shantoto his board. Yeah. Only you're just on mono ice, no. No card yeah. <laughs> cards, no no lightning cards, no wind cards. <laughs> yeah, it was a little weird. Uh, but it's good. Um, 
and then I was pretty much unable to like really attack because I knew he had so much haste in his deck mm-hmm. uh, with like the Warrior of Darkness, like the girls Alba and Diana or whatever her name is. Yeah, Alba and Diana. And then he had the uh, Ali say Alpha No, not to mention Alua. Mm-hmm. So that's basically I could swing for one damage and potentially be dead the next turn. Right, right. Off of like a couple three jump forwards. Um, <laughs> so there was really nothing I could do. Like I basically just waited until he doled my board down, <laughs> and then the final turn I swung with my Cecil, and I probably shouldn't have. But even going back and like rewinding it, we, me and him went over it, and there was he still could have doled my both my forwards anyhow. So okay. Either way, I was doomed. Did uh, <laughs> you say like, "Oh crap, I'm dead"? Wait, let's see what would have happened, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like after I I had lost the game, um, but I was like, if I wouldn't have attacked with Cecil, I just uh, and then we went back, and he could have gold best back his one guy, doled both my forwards, and then okay. still swung to swung through for both damage. So, but yeah, he went on to make top eight. Yeah. Um, I believe losing to Hunter Nance. That sounds familiar, slightly. Um, yeah, because me and him, we had actually, me, him, and Colin Coughlin, we were all, like, talking. We were like, well, regardless of what happens, we're just going to lose to Hunter, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, we had, we weren't very thrilled with that matchup. But, fortunately, that card's been, Death Machine has been eroded, so. Yeah. it's Everything is good again. <laughs> oh, man, I was... Oh, the amount of sadness when that came through, because uh, as we'll talk about in a little bit here, I played it in the side event the following day, and that yep. deck felt so good. And like half the <laughs> time, though, to, to be fair, I maybe played Death Machine in like three of the, like what, five rounds, two two or yeah. three of the five rounds, and then like once in, or twice in the top cut in the best of threes. So I I don't know if the deck needs it. It's certainly good. But I think the deck might be okay without it. Um, That's scary. Cause... <laughs> yeah. And I mean, even so, though, like, Death Machine sometimes would just be, like, an Odin, like, play it, kill a guy, because it's, like, just a super valuable thing. Like, if someone played a Yuri, I'll Death Machine and then let it die. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take a 5 CP Odin. It's not great, and, like, you'd prefer to have it get value and then Calbrain to keep it alive and all that. But, like, sometimes it's just good enough. Especially because the deck's so controlling. You have so many cards in hand. You have extra, like, named things. You can just pitch, kill, and, like, you just don't care. Uh, the deck chokes you out pretty well. Yeah, so I guess we'll go ahead and talk about that side of it. Sure. Um, uh, this um, one I'm not gonna remember all the matches, but oh, I will. I don't have them written down, but I'll try to remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we played in the three box. Is that what it was three box yeah, tournament? Three box side event. Yep. Uh, yeah. So uh, we played five rounds of Swiss, right? Mm-hmm. Five rounds. And then top cut because of me. <laughs> Yeah, so this guy right here, we were going top cut, and everyone's like, oh, I'm starving, I need to go eat, oh, I'm hungry, like, I want to go here and rest, and, like, then come back and hang out. Cody's like, who am I playing in top, he's like, am I playing Matthew Rice in top cut? They're like, yeah. He's like, all right, we're playing it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, uh, so I, I've never actually gotten to play Rice in a tournament, so it was kind of like one of those things where I just wanted to play him. Um, so. And then you beat him. Yeah, and then beating him. Then I felt kind of bad, but... <laughs> and then, then I saw him the next round again. Yeah. And then it was like, all right, am I playing Zach? Because I didn't want to play you because I knew you were on the Death Machine deck. And I have nothing for that. So, um, so yeah, then I saw I wasn't playing you. I was playing my round one opponent. Decided to play that out because I have a good matchup against Chocobos. And yeah, it sucked too because I went 3-2 in the event, um, but I lost to like higher people. And the mm-hmm. two losses I had were my two top eight matches before playing you in the finals. Oh, like the top eight and top four? Yeah, so those are the two matchups I lost to were the two I had to replay. So I'm sitting there looking at you like, come on. <laughs> but I uh, ended up figuring out how to win the ice matchup. Because the first time I played ice, I wasn't quite sure what I needed to value in the matchup. And he got a really early good Sephiroth play out, and I just couldn't recover. Um, but That's I, That was against Ron, right? Ron Escorted? Yep, yeah, but then I 2-0'd yeah. him in the uh, top eight match. Because he, he didn't draw the greatest, I will say. But I definitely shifted the play style to uh, play for that matchup, and it got a lot better after that. And plus, I mean, as the rounds were going, I've never played with a deck before. So, like, round one was, like, is this how we play the deck? <laughs> and I was just kind of figuring it out. I played, like, two games of it the night before uh, okay. against Jonathan Gordon's uh, water lightning deck. Interesting. Yeah, for the side event, I switched back to regular old mono ice. Oh, okay. Uh, basically, the deck I was going to play for the tournament until... 
the morning of uh rice and oki convinced me to go to mono earth or to ice earth i played one match against their deck and i won that so i was like okay well <laughs> wow might as well go side, great 100% Seems win rate how can i lose <laughs> so yeah we ended up just switching last minute and playing more flan than i expected but but no and then the side event finals came down to me and you yep so uh, i was like <laughs> i'm like i wanted to play it out to just punish you because i knew i i knew the match was pretty favorable and i'm like you made us play this out and i'm gonna crush you <laughs> but uh we ended up we just want to take the split and then play for it was like a promo more for glory right. or, than anything so we played a best of one <laughs> yeah yeah i had i was i was hoping you would say you wanted to split uh so <laughs> fortunately you did so <laughs> yeah. uh, just because i knew i had no chance unless i like discarded your entire hand um very early yeah that's what happened but no we, we, so we played that game and it wasn't even close i don't think it was you were in control like 99 percent of the match yeah so i got to and then the previous match the was a scions player and he did very well against me in the swiss he got like if all of my wrath from the weekend could have been channeled into one game <laughs> he felt all of it because he stumbled on backups in the beginning like in our in our uh, in our swiss match uh yeah. i Played two Hecaton. I Hecaton two of his Alisays, and he had a third Alisay. Slammed it. Oh. Like, right in the beginning of the game. Just like, Alisay, boom, okay. Alisay. Alisay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I ended up losing. But then, top cut game, he did not find an Alisay. Played, like, one back up. I just built up, built up. Then he played a Minfilia, searched a thing, played a thing. I'm pretty sure, like, Veritas, kill your guy. Hecaton, kill your Minfilia, put you back on one back up. Uh, cause Ooh. I had a Gito to get it back later if I needed it. <laughs> um, and I had the second one. So I was like, I was sitting there. What, as soon as I saw Alice, I just snap, kill it. Uh, but he got stuck on like another second backup that I also had Katan cause it was clear he wasn't getting Alice anytime soon. Uh, he eventually kind of built up a board and I got to, uh, a Gito cast Raiden, remove one of your guys, break one of your guys, <laughs> the nine drop. And then yeah. the following turn, he refilled with, like, three guys again. I went, Ark, kill all your guys. <laughs> <laughs> so he just got wiped, wiped, wiped every turn until I just, you know, jammed in for damage with my Gigas, Momity, BS, and Calbrena and all that. <laughs> so, like, all of, like, everything I wanted in life just happened that match. Like, <laughs> people are watching, like, what is this stupid <laughs> Raiden into Ark? Okay. Seems um, pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah, and then we played, and, yeah. Um, so... What takeaways from the the actual like Crystal Cup? Uh, would you ever play your, the deck that you played again? Uh, uh, I would what, play an edited like, version of it, uh, maybe okay. a version closer to Sam's. Uh, I definitely missed Ozma, so I did a lot of testing with Ozma um, leading up to the event. I was playing like a tricolor monsters, ice, earth, water uh, that had like Steiner and Ico to find both Garland, Steiner, and Ozma. So it had like mm -hmm. all of that search package together, um, which was pretty sweet. But Garland, without too much dull or discard backup, I found was a little bit anemic. The card is very powerful in the ice decks, and we were, we were testing ice water a lot for the event. And I was basically sold on that until maybe three days before the event, um, because I had played Water Earth one of my Octagon matchups and just crushed my opponent. Like, it wasn't even close. And it was a different version of the deck. It had, like, Vanille and Hecaton chairs and stuff for the Kefka, so you could, like, bring Vanille back, and it was really cool. But we went a little more monster centric and a little more kind of you know, like the gal, like bigger things. Um, Interesting. So yeah, I would play it just in a different variety. I, I would have oh. to make some changes to feel good about it. Uh, take out the so little liking probably and go more monsters for the sacking. So Earthwater has a, a quite a big card pool of really good cards, sure. so that's kind of tough to narrow it down to fifty. Yeah, because like you're sitting there looking like, huh, Luminous Puma, Ozma. Mira, Realm, Gao, Kafka, <laughs> Wall. Like, there's so many options yeah. and the ways you can build it. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, I think if I had a... I would definitely change Porum or Palum, whichever the ice one is in my deck. Oh, yeah. Every time I drew every time I drew that card, I never wanted it. Like, <laughs> I get that. It's very the, sweet, like, but... It reads very good, but I don't know. The only time I played it, it was to bait out the summon. Which I knew was there anyhow, and the summon still did its thing. So <laughs> I'd probably change that. Maybe add a second Renoa to my deck. Um, oh, you only had one. 
Yeah, only one, which felt pretty bad. Especially, like, I hit it in damage against Max. And then I drew two cards, and one of them was the Palum, or Porum, whichever. <laughs> oh, so and I was like, like, I was like, man, freeze, if I would have switched... Yeah, if I would have switched this to a Renoa, I could have renoa would bounce my Indeed Hog, Ooh, pull it back, get his card from hand. So, also, that'd probably I be the one change. in your deck Cecil being pretty good with that, too. Like, if you just jam Cecil mm -hmm. and then Renoa, like, just break two of your dull guys, pff, seems good. Yeah, and then there was times where I could have... Like, I had Palum. I'm looking at Sid Alstein. He has no cards at hand. I'm just like, this could be Renoa here. <laughs> um, but yeah, or maybe add more Earth cards. Um, just because it felt really bad when I had to discard, like, Cecil to get the Earth CP for Shantoto. Mm -hmm. um, it's always so. a nice follow-up, especially against aggressive decks, because if, if you go Shantoto, they go Threat, Swing. Normally, at that point in the game, if you just Shantotoed and they have enough CP to, like, play a Haste Threat and hit you... Cecil's going to kill whatever that haste threat was yeah. on entry. So, yeah, it's definitely a nice follow-up. Um, like, I could see Wall being a good addition to your deck because it's pretty good in most decks. Yeah, it's just a good card. Like, <laughs> okay. like I've actually yeah. seen a lot of people move away from it recently, which is interesting, and I kind of agree. I haven't wanted to put it in over some other card, but in a deck that's splashing for Earth, I think that's one of the higher-value cards like by itself without having bigger Earth packages. Yeah, but... Like like we had said, I hadn't really tested much with the deck. I wanted to add Jesse, but just to search the Genesis or the Sephiroth. Um, mm -hmm. But I eventually, just I can search Genesis. I always just assume you're yeah. going for Sephiroth. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not a bad card, but <laughs> but yeah, that was our uh, Tampa experience. What about outside of the tournament? Did you guys go out to dinner or so anything like that? We didn't do as much as we wanted to. Um, we went out. Uh, Friday after the like big locals tournament, which you didn't show up to, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fine. I had to do family, right? I had to... No, oh, well no. for the for the day I was, and then I was testing with uh, Virgil and Oki and Rice and all them. Oh, yeah, that, all, that's right. The whole which didn't which really didn't matter because I tested a deck that I didn't play, and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, so. I mean, no, I guess it's different enough that that matters. But I guess before the Friday night tournament, we went to uh, just a big. Uh, buffet korean barbecue thing <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. pre-tournament dinner that was that was great um awesome. my, minus somehow all the credit cards and like all the payment got locked up for like 20 minutes like we were just standing there waiting for people to get their stuff back and we couldn't leave oh. we were, we're all late yeah we we uh, had a story about that at applebee's oh yeah i think we i think i don't know why we went to applebee's um but <laughs> that's where we ended up because there were so many of us mm -hmm. and i think it took us probably well over an hour just to get just to pay oh jeez. So it was it was a nightmare, but but all the don't, days are meshing don't. together. But yeah, we went to various food places, and then Saturday night we uh, I think that was Cece's night. I want to say I think it was like Cece's, Cece's pizza. Pizza, yeah. So we uh, we plan on going to a place called Gators. I think it's Gators Dockside. Yeah, that's where we ended up going. <laughs> Which is a very, very good restaurant. But the way we were seated, it was like three booths of four people. And then we had more people coming. So, like, you're going to have to, like, yell across the room if you want to talk to anybody. So right. we're like, hey, sorry, but we're going to go find another place. Went to Applebee's, who <laughs> Serena called Applebee's. And they said, and they said we have, hey, we have 14 people. Uh, if we come over, do you guys have room for us? Like, yeah, we have room for you right now. Like, sweet, quick. Went over, <laughs> walked in. Said, hey, can you sit us? Or we're, we just called. We have 14 people. See, he's like, that's going to be about 45 minutes. We're like, Ooh. what? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, yeah, uh, it'll be 45 minutes. She's like, I just called and said, you have seating now. And the guy at the front said, oh, well, no one told me, so it's going to be 45 minutes. <laughs> oh. It's like, okay. That's, the, that's like, the customer service we were looking for. <laughs> so, so we peaced out. We're like, all right, Cece's Pizza, whatever. All you can eat crap pizza <laughs> <laughs> so i went over there uh, that was good and then sunday we couldn't go to dinner with everybody i know you went with like oki and that basically everybody that was left uh yeah we sam we Hart, all went to oh sorry oh but no you're good uh, i was gonna say sam had left at that point but we were in the tournament and i was doing well enough i'm like i kind of want to get my value out of this I'm glad i stayed uh and then yeah after the tournament you and everybody went out but I promised my girlfriend I'd get home. We'd watch Game of Thrones because that was the premiere, <laughs> and uh, the guys understood. Uh, they were pretty wiped anyway. We all were. So I'm like, 
uh, halfway home, I was like, I'm glad we did not go out to eat because I would have fell asleep driving. <laughs> I was just exhausted. <laughs> yeah, so we we ended up going out to the Gators Dockside place for the second night in a row. Um, mm-hmm. We went Saturday, either Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. And uh, But like right before we left, we were thinking about the Game of Thrones because everybody wanted to watch that. Fortunately, the lady at the Holiday Inn was like, I'm going to put it on the TV in the lobby. <laughs> so we go out. The birthday torch gets passed to Chris Adams. So now it is his birthday. That, so, yeah. yeah, he's the daily birthday man. Uh, <laughs> Who's so we had some drinks. To pass it on? I believe it was Oki's idea. Okay. He was pretty. We had a huge table, so he was pretty far down from me. When I saw the like all the employees coming out and like clapping, uh, I had just assumed it was for rice. And then they put it in front of Chris, and it was just like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was pretty a lot of fun. Uh, and we got to have drinks and kind of just chit chat about the game, plan for like future events. Um, then we all went back and watched Game of Thrones in the lobby, did a draft. It's a kind good, of good uh, little bow tied on the end of the great. Yeah, event. yeah, it was it was a good time. Uh, get some draft experience for the future Crystal Cups. So yeah, for sure. Um, so that felt pretty good. I say, um, I'll yeah. try not to delve too much into your draft experiences. We'll save that for a future cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I'm not very. I'm not very good at drafts, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> any other thought about or thoughts about the event in general, or anything about Florida um, events moving forward? Any notes? I think uh, the RVA guys did a fantastic job. Uh, I agree. Doing like the commentary and the stream and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I think they were phenomenal. Uh, hope to see them at future events, whether that's playing or doing commentary. Either way, I'll be excited. Uh, the staff at Sunshine Games did a fantastic job for keeping a hundred of us <laughs> con- contained and uh, keeping everything running smoothly and everything like that. So I have no complaints. It's probably one of my favorite events that yeah. I've been to. So I would say it's definitely one of the smoothest events uh, for Final Fantasy that I've attended. Like usually, even at like nationals, there was a crazy repair. Uh, like fanfare, there were some issues we've discussed and. There's always like some kind of like delay or something that happens that like people get oh, all annoyed about. <laughs> but no, this ran very smoothly. It was fun. Uh, obviously, I wish I did a little better, but I mean, as as we say, get good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to playing future events. Uh, I know I can't make it to Toronto uh, because of family engagements. So, uh, so so what's next? What events I can travel to? We got to figure it out because <laughs> I was kind of. <laughs> I was leaning. I'm like, all right, I think Toronto will be my other Crystal Cup that I can go to, and then I'll just spam LQs when they pop out. Uh, cause, so so yeah. no Kansas on the radar? Uh, I don't know. When is Kansas again? It's coming up soon, I believe, right? I think it's June June something. 12, oh, 14, <laughs> somewhere. One of those weekends. So Kansas uh, is draft? I believe so, yeah. Okay, so... Let's see, Kansas, I've come Kansas. around a little bit about the draft because this six packs I think is significantly better uh, with six. I, I had a problem with the four pack format. Um, six is a lot more reasonable, but I yeah, I just I don't know what I can do for travel this year in terms of financials and all that. So okay. we will see. Yeah. I will do what and, I can. Uh, most likely, I'll attend the last chance in nationals. Like, I mean, it's, okay. it's like a vacation. <laughs> so <laughs> I uh, even if I don't uh, actually play in nationals because for whatever reason i can't win an lq or something but um i definitely plan to make it there so okay yeah kansas is actually on the 21st of june so correction on that okay so it's a couple weeks after yeah Yeah, that'll uh, be i can look into that one that'll most likely be the next event i'm at i can't make kansas or portland so unfortunately you you can't make toronto or portland yeah yeah that's what i meant (laughs) canada canada not kansas uh, (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah, so good luck to anybody who's attending those events. Yeah, it should be a sweet event. I know a lot of the Tampa folk are going up there, so it'll be nice to watch and be able to cheer them on. Awesome, man, awesome. But yeah, I think that about wraps us up for this week, guys. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, we have been the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. And I'm Zach Bro, and we'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Choker Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out CosmoVillies.com and use promo code CHOKABROS to get 10% off your next order.